so good day viewers uh, welcome to another biology lesson this is your presenter mr mlenga from js learning academy so we are looking at uh, the skeleton and locomotion the subtopic is muscles and the joints lesson objectives describe the structure of a skeletal muscle demonstrate the action of antagonistic muscles compare the bow and socket and the hindi joint so at the end of our lesson should be able to describe the structure of a skeletal muscle should also be able to demonstrate the action of antagonistic muscles should also be able to compare the bow and socket and the hindi joints very important okay so we are going to start with looking at the structure of a skeletal muscle so we know that the skeleton consists of the joints and muscles that work together to allow the body to move and this is what we call locomotion okay so the structure of the skeletal muscle it consists of the tendons okay uh, when you look at this arm right here we are able to see the tendon right here not so so these tendons they are the ones now that connect the muscle to the bone okay so we have the muscle right here this muscle which is in front it's called the bicep muscle then we have the muscle at the back these muscles are called the tricep muscles then we have got when you look at the arm right here we've got the bone here which is called the ulna bone and we have another bone right here which is called the radius bone so this is very important for you to understand so here we have uh, a tendon which connects a muscle to a bone then we also have a ligament which is um, which connects a bone to another bone okay so we know that uh, these skeletal muscles they are made up of what uh, muscle tissue that we call fibers and these muscle fibers they are the ones that are now grouped into bundles that are attached to the bones by the tendons just like uh, the way i've explained there okay so each uh, skeletal muscle it contains a uh, lots of what cells these skeletal muscles that you are able to see they contain a lot of cells uh, blood vessels and nerve fibers okay so uh, these skeletal muscles the biceps and the triceps they work in opposite okay that is if a person wants to straighten the arm or bend the the arm okay and they're working in opposite of muscles we call this as the antagonistic muscles okay so the action of antagonistic muscles of the upper arm when a person bends the arm you can see right here we have this arm which is bent when the person bends the arm you find that the biceps which are here in front of the arm okay they are going to do what to contract okay so that this person can bend the arm so when the biceps contract these triceps at the back they are going to to relax okay that is the bending of the arm okay so this one is for bending bending the arm now when a person straightens the arm uh, uh, like on this diagram right here you find that these biceps the biceps they are going to relax okay wow the triceps they are going to contract so this working of the muscles in opposite direction we call this as the antagonistic muscles so antagonistic muscles these are muscles that work in opposite so to straighten the arm when you straighten the arm the bicep muscles they relax wow the tricep muscles they contract when you bend the arm the bicep muscles they are going to bend so that you'll be able to bend your arm then the tricep muscles at the back they are going to do what they are going to to relax so this action we call it as the antagonistic muscles let us now look at joints so uh we know that a joint is a place at which two bones meet so the place at which two bones meet we call it a joint so for instance if you have a 
a bond like this then you also have uh, another bond like this so right here where they are meeting we call this as a joint okay so a joint is a place where two bonds meet that is called the, a joint now we have joints that we call synovia joints so these synovia joints they are just joints that allow free movement between two bonds okay for example we have the shoulder joint we also have the hip joint okay and the knee joint these joints they allow free movement okay between two bonds so these synovia joints they consist of um the synovia fluid and this fluid it just helps to move the what yeah, it helps in movements okay so here we look at the synovia joint so this is an example of a synovia joint we have a bone right here which is a living tissue we have the muscles we also have the cartilage and we have the synovia fluid then a bone here okay so make sure that you take note of this diagram and you are able to to label it so uh, when we look at um, a ligament i've said a ligament this is a connective tissue that connects a bone to another bone okay then when you look at the tendons this is a, a connective tissue as well that connects a muscle to a bone then when you look at the joint capsule this just encloses the joint membrane we look at the synovia fluid it just supplies nutrients and act as a lubricant okay that reduces the friction or it allows the movement okay then when you look at the synovia membrane this synovia membrane just secretes the synovia fluid then when you look at the cartridge right here so this cartridge it just re uh, reduces friction at the end of the bones okay it just reduces friction at the end of the bones it also absorbs mechanical shocks and spreads what the force okay so i hope you have uh, gotten something from these functions so let us now look at uh, the types of the synovia joints so types of synovia joints we have uh, the ball and socket joint we also have the hindi joint so let us look at uh, the ball and socket joint okay so this is the ball and socket joint for example when you look at uh, the hip joint and uh, the shoulder these are examples of uh, ball and socket uh, joints so we have the hip joint these are examples of ball and socket joint then we also have the shoulder joint okay so this diagram right here uh, this is the shoulder joint we can see it has parts the ligament synovia membrane the one that secretes the synovia fluid we also have the cartilage the one that reduces friction we also have the synovia fluid the one that uh, helps in terms of movement then you also have the humerus bone which is a long bone right there okay so the bone socket joints um, these are synovia joints where only one bone has a round head so when you look at this bone you can see that there is a round head here okay only one bone has a round what round head which we call a ball and another bone has a depression which we call a socket a socket hence the name ball and socket so these joints ball and socket joints they allow movement in three places so these they allow movement in three places okay in three places okay example the hip joint the shoulder the shoulder joint a person is able to move in three uh places okay so uh we look at another type of the joint apart from the bone and socket joint we move on to the hindi joint so when you look at the hindi joint uh this is the structure right here 
So hinge joints, they are also synovia joints, which are our movement in only one direction. So these hinge joints, they allow movement in one direction only. Okay? They allow movement in one direction only. And um, the, their movement is just through an angle of what? 180 degrees. But for the bone socket joint, they move at 360 degrees. Okay? For example, of the end joints, we have the elbow. Okay? We have an elbow joint. We also have uh, the knee joint. These are examples of end joint. Apart from the elbow joint and the knee uh, joint, we also have uh, uh, joints of the pharyngeus. Okay? These are examples of uh, Hindi joint. So remember what I've said. Hindi joint. These are synovial joints, which are our movement in only one plane. Okay, usually through an angle of 180 degrees. For example, the elbow joint, the knee joint, and the pharyngeus uh, joints. So we can also put an example like an knuckles. Okay, the knuckles. All these are examples of Hindi joint. Okay? So, uh, we now move on. So, we have said bow and socket joints. These are synovia joints where one bone has a round head, we call a bow, and another has a depression that we call a socket. So, these joints, they allow movement in three planes. For example, the hip joint and the shoulder joint. Or you can say they allow movement in at an angle of 360 degrees. Okay? Um, then for the hindi joint, you have said these are also synovia joints which allow movement in only one plane. Usually through an angle of 180 degrees. For example, of the hindi joints, we are looking at the elbow joint, the knee joint, and the knuckle joints, also joints of the pharyngeus. So, these are examples of Hindi joints. So, apart from that, let us now move on. We look at the disorders, okay? The disorders of the joints. So, we know that the bones and joints can become weak due to aging, poor eating habits, deficiency of nutrients and the minerals, or through an injury. So diseases of the joints are not painful, but they can make simple daily activities like walking or bending down to tie your shoelaces extremely difficult. So this simply means that when a person has got these diseases that are affecting the joints, it's become very difficult for such people to be bending down to do uh, certain activities like tying your shoelaces or picking objects that are down, okay? Uh, other contributors of these um, bones becoming weak, we have talked of aging when people, they have become too old, also poor eating habits and lacking the, uh, certain deficiency in, in our diet, okay, or through injur injuries. So, let us now look at examples of um, dis disorders of the joints. We have this disorder that we call arthritis. We have the gout. We also have dislocation. We also have tuberculosis of the bones. We also have bony marrow cancer or leukemia. These are disorders of the joints. So uh, when we look at gout, gout is just a condition characterized by formation of uric acid crystals at the joints. It leads to swelling and paining of joints. It can be controlled by reducing the intake of meat and meat products whose amino acids are easily converted to uric acid. Okay, so for this um, joint disorder, normally is caused by uric acid crystals at the joints. Okay, so this allows the joints to be swelling and paining a lot. So people suffering from this condition, they have to make sure that they reduce the intake of what meat. Okay, meat products. Then let us look at arthritis right here. 
So arthritis, this is just the inflammation of the joints, which is characterized by painful and swollen joints. The inflammation initially affects the synovial membrane. So when the synovial membrane is affected, it fails to secrete the synovial fluids that helps in terms of movement. Okay, So the inflammation initially affects the synovial membranes, but eventually causes damage to the cartridge and the bone, making movement very difficult. So this is uh, the disorder of the joint, gout and arthritis. That is how they are. They are caused. Okay. So we look at dislocation, which is also a disorder of the joint. So dislocation, this is a condition where one or more bones move out of place at the joint. So this one, it normally happens when uh, a person uh, is having an, an accident. Okay. Or when you fall down. Okay. Or when you are playing maybe football, then you crash with your friend. Uh, dislocation of the bones can uh, take place where you find that one bone will move out of place and then it needs to be put back okay in severe cases you such people can tend to go to the hospital and seek medical attention okay then tuberculosis of the bones this is just the formation of tubercles in the bones due to infection by mycobacterium tuberculosis okay so here we are seeing that uh, the bones, they become infected through the certain mycobacterium. Micro okay. Then we have the bone marrow cancer or leukemia, which is just the uncontrolled division of cells in the bone marrow. So uh, this is what I had for you under our lesson for today. So let us now look at uh, the questions. So we have the task right here. Question one. State four functions of the skeleton in vertebrates. Question two. Name the tissue which joins a bone to a muscle, a bone to another bone. Question three. Name two many examples of synovia joints. Question four. State the functions of the following structures. Roman number one. Function of the synovia membrane. Roman number two. Function of the synovial fluid. Roman numero 3. Function of the articular cartridge. Roman numero 4. Function of the ligaments. So that is our question 4. Then we come to our question 5 right here. In question 5 we have question A and B. Use the diagram below to answer the questions that follow. So you have this diagram right here. Which is uh, labeled R, Q, S and T. Question A, name the parts labeled Q, R, S, and T. So you state the name of T, S, Q, and R. Okay, so this is our question A. When you look at uh, question B right here, name the type of joint formed at the part labeled S. So at this part labeled S right here. What type of the joint is it formed? Is it the hinge joint or is it the uh, bow and socket joint? Then, uh, okay, I think this is the same question. So, next question is this one. The diagram below shows a human forearm, partly cut off. So, this is the human forearm, which is partly cut off. We have the shoulder right here. Then we have muscle X and muscle Y. Then there is an elbow right here. So question A, name the muscle labeled X and Y. So you name the muscle labeled X and the muscle labeled Y. T, y. Okay. Then uh, our question B. So this was supposed to be question B, not question A. Describe how the muscles bring about bending of the arm. So you describe how the muscles bring about bending of the arm so thank you so much everybody for having time to view this content this has been your presenter mr mlenga bye bye